play large tonight for Indiana. Well, he's going to have to initiate offense, take care of the basketball, and contain Ace Baldwin, who has played at such a high level. We, we've seen greatness from Xavier Johnson at times, but he hasn't been consistent. He's going to have to be good tonight. Oh, That's pretty good. What a start. Khalil <laughs> Ware with the flush. Well, the set play off the tip, and Indiana advancing the ball. Khalil Ware running the floor, and the Hoosiers throwing it up. Ware throwing it down. Here's Ace Baldwin Jr. Two games this year against Indiana. All he's done is average 22 and a half points per game. This is a matchup to watch here. Zach Hicks had great games in these two against the Hoosiers. It's a tough guard for Malik Renu out there on the perimeter. The there you go. Around to Hicks for the three. Got a great look. He played really well last night against Michigan. 20.6 rebounds, 6 of 11 from the three-point line. There's one to watch there because Renu's going to have to chase him out of the perimeter. He had really kind of struggled his last three games before that big breakout last night. On the drive inside, muscling it through contact is Malik Renu. Just grown man basketball there. Renu pushing Puck Johnson up. That, throw, that ball thrown over the top and he just takes those defenders with him. There's Puck Johnson. He's been playing well in the last couple of games for Penn State. At 19, finally, yeah, finally found his offense. Yeah. Let's go back to this opening tip, a, a set play off the tip for Indiana. Indiana wins it. You can see Ware is just running. Gabe Cup set the screen, and that is well executed to start this one. Penn State team is a potent offensive team. 80 points or more in 11 games this year. Eight of those Big Ten games as the three rebound goes out of bounds to Indiana. Well, that's something that Penn State did so well against the Hoosiers. In, in two games, they make 21 threes and were plus 42 from the three-point line. So something to watch tonight. The Hoosiers' lack of shooting is well documented, but Penn State has burned them. Mako trying to find a room against Hicks on the baseline and Cups will reset. A lot on the shoulders of young Gabe Cups tonight, the freshman guard. Seven on the shot clock. And a whistle away from the ball and Baco. I think he went out of bounds. If you're McKenzie and Baco, you, you can't leave the floor. He runs out of bounds. Now he's saying he got pushed, but. Yeah. Officials tonight, Jeffrey Anderson, Courtney Green, and Andy O'Brien. Jeffrey Anderson with the call. There's Puff Johnson. Hicks will enter it. Kudus Wahab. Had a tremendous season for Penn State. He got where in the air. The shot won't go and where the rebound. will drop it down to renew extra pass xavier johnson and Baco lost it off his leg out of bounds to penn state it's gonna be the deal here can the hoosiers take care of the basketball penn state forced 25 turnovers in the two meetings between these teams and those active hands we talked about baldwin but it's not just him this mike Rhodes defense is designed to turn you over and State shooting well over 50% against Indiana in the two games this year. 0 for 3 to start this one. Baldwin. Pivots drops it down low. Wahab to work against Ware. Ware with the swap. Puff Johnson on the run with the two-hand flush. As his offense has improved, his cutting has been the big difference to me. And a whistle and an offensive foul on Renew. Puff got back to take the charge. Good play on both ends for the former North Carolina Tar Heel. Well, I think the, the easy twos have, got, have gotten him going from three, and then he's getting back. Malik Renew trying to force the issue. W what a sequence for Puff Johnson. Leo Ware with the initial rejection, but then Mackenzie Mbako turning his head, and Puck Johnson is hanging on rims. Pennsylvania Player of the Year when he came out of high school, battled some injuries early at North Carolina, and never really got on track. Came back home to Pennsylvania this year, and has really come on late for the Nittany Lions. Kudus Wahab going back to work. Oh, that out well. high that shot was taken there. Khalil Ware totally affecting the hook. Pushed out by the double. 
And Baco, baseline drive. Tip is there for Renew. It's where the Hoosiers are going to have an advantage. Penn State, not a good defensive rebounding team all year long. These shots go up, and Indiana is going to send multiple guys to the offensive glass. Baldwin, they left him alone. Cups trying to fight through the screens, couldn't get there, and Baldwin misses the three. Penn State's had some really good looks here early, but nothing doing. One for seven from the floor. Renew can't get that one to drop. Rebound ends up with Ace Baldwin. Numbers if they hurry. Kern trying to speed it up. Waha trying to beat Ware. Can't get the roll. One for eight from the floor for Penn State. Khalil Ware is affecting so much at the rim right now. And a foul is called on Puff Johnson. Slaps it out of the hands of Renew. And a timeout on the floor. 6-2 early for IU. The Penn State offense have gotten some good looks from three, but haven't been able to find the range. Baco will inbound for IU. Blair has been outstanding so far. Ball poked free. He's blocked shots already. And 0 for 4 for Waha. Look at the active hands. I mean, Baldwin digging that out from where, and then the back tap as McKenzie and Baco tries to make his way towards the rim. as to who is going to do the inbounding for Indiana. There's Mbako working against Hicks. 13 to shoot, Mbako turns, and that's what we've seen a lot from McKenzie Mbako as the season's worn off. His game has grown so much, whether that's driving to the basket or right there, using his size to post up Zach Hicks. Just patient and get to that right hand. Co-freshman of the year with Owen Freeman in the league. Baldwin wanted Puff Johnson. Puff trying to save it for the over and back. He can't. Mackenzie and Baco coming off this pin down. That's the initial action. It's guarded well by Hicks. And now you get to this physical back down. He gets that angle and just scores it right through Hicks. Since February 10th. How about those numbers? And you come in with so much expectation when you're a decommit from Duke when Kyle Filipowski announced he was going to return. You had all the hype as a high-level recruit, and it just didn't click right away for Mackenzie and Baco. But what we've seen from him of late is what I think everybody expected from him, and Renew may have bumped his shoulder there. The swing into the corner, DeMarco Dunn open three, and it's one for ten now for Penn State. Penn State has got to be happy with the looks they're getting from the perimeter. These are the shots that went down in the two wins against the Hoosiers. Renew's got the matchup here. Yep, good, good decision here by Xavier Johnson to let Renew go to work. Finds Cups, who feeds Mbako, driving the lane. Good challenge by Waha. He is very underrated in terms of his verticality defense at the rim. He has done a nice job this year of contesting shots for this defense. And another tremendous look, and Nick Kern just has it go around the world and pop out. Unbelievable. That lid is real on the Penn State basket. Mentioned Renew looked like he bumped his shoulder here. Watch this. He's still trying to, to massage this out and just kind of gets caught there as Ace Baldwin pulls that rebound down. And yeah, clearly he, he is feeling some discomfort. Right through that contact though, and Renew to the rim for two. He seems to but be feeling okay. well enough to score that thing, right? <laughs> the footwork on display. Late for New. He, he can score that thing in the paint. Another good look for Dunn in the corner. This one will fall, and after a 1-for-11 start from the floor, Penn State finally able to find the bottom of the bucket. Big shot for DeMarco Dunn. Didn't score against Michigan, only took one shot, played 11 minutes, but he is capable. Here's Renew. A handoff to Xavier Johnson. Entry to Ware. Working against Demetrius Lilly. Good defense by Lilly. I would have liked to have seen Ware just get to that space with a turnaround jumper. He's so comfortable with that. A little bit awkward off-balance shot. Baldwin will reset with 15 to shoot. The lob to Lilly. Didn't oh, see it coming. Yeah. And Paco with the swat. Lilly had to locate that ball. And Baco just 
found it first. Honestly, a pretty impressive catch from Lilly because he didn't see it till late. But nice job by McKenzie and Baco of being to the basketball on the help side. It is finding Ware in the corner for three. Khalil Ware has been good in his opportunities for three this year, almost 45 percent. Not a great three-point shooting team, this Indiana team. 33%, 12th best in the conference. Here's Baldwin with 10 to shoot. Kern toeing the line. Back-to-back -back threes now. And despite that horrible start offensively, Penn State's just within two. Well, Nick Kern hadn't made a three in six games, so that's a big shot for this offense to jumpstart them. The looks were there early, but guy and DeMarco Dunn breaking that seal who didn't make a shot last night. Helps had it tipped out of bounds. It'll stay with Indiana with 17 to shoot. They're going to look at this, but clearly from that angle there, Nick Kern a, a good couple inches behind that three-point line. Called the three on the floor, so the score you see on your screen is accurate. Anthony Leal in the ball game. The Bloomington natives will feed Khalil Ware. Nick Kern blowing up that play. Physical with Leal and just ran him off the dribble handoff. Shot clock down to five. Xavier Johnson, the step back three. Way off the mark. Baldwin accelerating. Drops it off. Done. Now Baldwin once more using the screen from Lilly. He's done inside. Tough shot, but he used the window. He just kind of slipped that screen. He was said, I don't even think he was looking for the ball. Brings Baldwin zips it in there, and what a start for DeMarco Dunn. Yeah, a little short trying to throw it off the glass. Anthony Walker gets an opportunity for Indiana. In the corner, Cups for three. And Cups breaks the 8-0 run. He's going to need to be a factor at stretching the defense, spreading the floor. Hadn't scored the last two games. Turn for Baldwin against Ware, and a foul is called, and a timeout on the floor. After a and you look at the fact that Malik Renu and Khalil Ware are second and third individually in terms of points in the paint. Trailing Zach Eady, they, they know where they can score it, and there's no doubt that Indiana's going to look inside early and often. July 13th, the BTN Big Ten K returns to Soldier Field in Chicago for the fantastic 10K and 5K races and tailgate parties. Scan the QR code to register right now at btnbigtenk.com. You've been training for that, right? I have been, yeah. Several years ago in the COVID BTN Big Ten K, I won. Oh, you're the champion. I, well, I'm not anymore. I was in 2020. I didn't say reigning champion. I no, champion. I am a champion. If you look on btnbigtenk.com, I believe you'll see it in the list of winners. It was a virtual one, so there's really no way to gauge, but it took one step and crowned yourself. There's a picture somewhere on the internet of me crossing the finish line. Where inside muscles that one through a hop. And the fact that he came down with that high low, Ace Baldwin pursuing that play, but Khalil Weir going up high, grabbing it, gathering himself, and finishing over the top. The Indiana team getting what they want inside yes. right now. Are you surprised by that without Galloway? Well, I, I'm not surprised they've gone inside. I am a bit surprised at only three turnovers here early. You know, we've almost gotten to halfway through this half, and so far, in, Indiana has not had those turnovers for touchdowns that can really kill you when you play Penn State. Johnson, the hard bounce to win. They're backing down against Wahab. A lot of contact. Where muscles it through that contact with Puff Johnson, the rebound. Marco Dunn, five early points for Dunn. Kern trying to work against Mbako. High off the window around where, and Mbako ends up with the basketball. Penn State at the rim has just not been able to convert plays. A lot of that's Khalil Ware, but they're Kern getting a pretty good look. Some excellent looks tonight. There's one for Mbako right at the rim for an easy two. It's such a luxury when you make shots like McKenzie Mbako has this season, you're going to get aggressive closeouts. He just drives that thing, and there is no help defense from the Nittany Lions. That ball looked like a kick ball, and it was. 
And it'll be Penn State ball with 20 on the shot clock. Our ultra replay is shot with Samsung Galaxy S24, and it's Puff Johnson going to work early. Well, Puff Johnson on that cut. Penn State is 1 for 1 on dunks and 0 for 9 on layups. I would say you should dunk it more. <laughs> Jamil Brown into Wahab, and Penn State will go to work again. Just four for 18 from the floor in the first half, yet only down five. And you say that coming from experience, of course. Oh, much dunking. Done. Good challenge by Anthony and Leo. Excellent defense. Oh, Indiana's defense has been on point here tonight. They defend the three better than anybody in the Big Ten Conference, but their scoring defense this year, they're 11th in the league in scoring team. So this is a much improved defensive effort so far. And Baco's shot blocked away by Wahab on the challenge, and now Baldwin will push it up the floor. Baldwin end to end working against Walker. That's one for ten now at the rim. Leal for three, and a three drops for Indiana's Anthony Leal. The skip pass, terrific vision there. Leal running the floor, getting to that corner. Again, scored in two games, but we know he can do that. 44% from three on the year. And Baldwin trying to break the 7 nothing run. He'll have to try to do that at the line as Leal picks up the personal foul, his first. Gabe Cups initiating this offense, and Penn State so worried about that paint. That the skip to Leal is there. This Indiana team has been a head scratcher at times this year. I'm sure for their fans as much as anybody else. But over the last four games, wins over Wisconsin at Maryland, at Minnesota, and against Michigan State. It's a team that seems to have found itself very late in the season and give the players and the staff a lot of credit because there was a ton of negativity flying around and they were able to weather the storm kind of shelter themselves from, from all the talk and for this team to find their way late winning four straight obviously not the season that indiana wanted or, or their fans wanted but they have not quit and gotten themselves off to a pretty good start here tonight in Minneapolis you know, and you give a lot of credit to Mike Woodson and his coaching staff because that's not an easy thing to do as the sea source of an odd whistle Andy any uh, any insight yeah unfortunately I uh, got the culprit here he's got a loud whistle one of the one of the cheerleaders here to my right uh, he had just admitted to me uh, I don't think he'll do it anymore but yes his whistle is pretty loud that they drew the attention of the officials Andy Katz I think Andy's a prime suspect now no oh, there's no doubt it's always the guys that are accusing others pawning it off on somebody else that's always the case in the movies oh it was over here he did that she did that like Scooby-Doo we, we yep. always know that the person accusing is going to be the one that ends up being the guy would have gotten away with it if it weren't for Andy Katz Walker rejected by Wahab ball was swinging around but kudos wahab great awareness and he has shown tonight that ability to protect the rim in the conference and blocks per game now baldwin will set it up penn state is 4 of 20 from the floor they're 0 for 10 on layups picks his three won't go and they're down just seven it's amazing that this is not a bigger indiana lead here whether it's been the Penn State perimeter shooting, the shots at the rim, I mean, there, there is just nothing going right for the Nittany Lions right now. So it's on this end that they have to try to stay in this game. Here's Renew, the double comes. Cups needs a little help. Entry to Renew. No wear, no Johnson on the floor, so Renew will fail. Oh, that right there. Yeah. That was a stagnant offensive possession for Indiana. Here's Baldwin, step back three, and another good look, couldn't get it to go, oh, but Puff Johnson found it, and he'll go to the line for two. A great effort there by Puff Johnson to get to the offensive glass. You know, Penn State did play last night, shot it pretty well, 41% from three in the win against Michigan. Puff Johnson just hanging around, that ball gets tipped, and he's right place, right time, earns a trip to the foul line. And Baco with the foul, his first. Puff Johnson to the line. Malik Renew not happy with Anthony Walker. They were having an animated conversation there on the free throw line. 
And they may be looking at this on the monitor just to confirm who the foul was on. It is on Mbako. And I think Renew thought that that second foul was going to be on him. If I read his lips right, I think he, he was saying, man, I've got two now. He still looks pink. <laughs> he does. But it's only know, one. He fouls about as much as anybody in this league, so I, I feel that pain. He has had six foul outs this season, and seemingly the last month of the year, Renew's been in foul trouble virtually every game. He leads the league with over three personal fouls a game. So he knows he commits a lot of fouls, but he knew he didn't commit that one. Wait a minute. Two for two for Puff Johnson, and now Leo O'Boyle will check in. Does Mbako say, no, that's on me. Right yep. Yes. Well, you can see Rich and Anthony Walker having that little discussion there from across the lane. Walker was saying, well, it wasn't on me. <laughs> I think Renew's saying, if you got the rebound, I wouldn't have been in this position. Xavier Johnson. Oh, nice little head and shoulder fake, and he takes it into two. Nobody for Penn State ever stops the basketball, and Xavier Johnson does exactly what you should do in that situation. Take it all the, all the way to the rim until you get stopped. There's Ace Baldwin on the drive. Wahab cleaning up the miss. Ball poked free, and Renew on the run. A bounce ahead to Johnson, and Johnson... Having a hard time saving that one, but a foul called on Leo O'Boyle for the nudge in the corner. Boy, Kudis Wahab had totally cleared out Khalil Ware, and that's another shot at the rim. I'm not sure if that eighth ball and layup was tipped, but this has gotten out of, out of hand with how many looks at the rim that Penn State, they don't have a field goal in the last 521, and somehow they're only down seven. It is crazy. Oh, wow, that was a layup for Renew. Couldn't get it to him, and now Johnson will start it up. Mbako, his defender, went down, and Mbako makes him pay with a deep two. Danger zone for Penn State. They need points. They need a field goal. Brown will try to provide it. Jameel Brown strong, and the rebound ends up with Penn State. Hicks, both free. Leal diving into the bench trying to save it. It'll stay with the Nittany Lions. It hasn't really mattered who's taking these threes outside of DeMarco Dunn and, and Nick Kern, who shoot just 23% from three. The, the guys that have burned Indiana here this season have just been ice cold to start this game. Now this is a stark contrast to the two regular season games between these two teams, with Penn State at times scored a goal. Set of the shoot, Kern against Mbako. Here's O'Boyle. Can't imagine that this is where they want the ball late clock with O'Boyle. Wow. And Hicks hits the three, and he's fouled by Leo. And this might be Penn State's worst possession of the night, and somehow it ends up being Zach Hicks for three with an opportunity for four. And here you see the contact by Leo. He just... Taps the shooter. And a four-point play, and Penn State, five of 26 from the floor is within five points. Renu against the much smaller O'Boyle. The hook a little strong, and the rebound a little. Got a good look. Leo really did a nice job handling the pressure and delivering that ball. Now Kern against Mbako. Here's O'Boyle. Baldwin. 0 for 5 from the floor. 10 to shoot. Got the screen. Baldwin in the lane. Too strong. He had his defender totally pinned on his back. Another good look for Penn State in that main area. Where fouled quickly by Kern. That'll be his first, team's fourth. Tomorrow, the TIAA Big Ten Men's Basketball Tournament continues here in Minneapolis with the quarterfinals. It all starts with Purdue and Michigan State. Coverage begins with a tip-off show at 11.30 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. We have some really cool matchups yeah. tomorrow, starting off with that matchup between...
the Boilermakers and the Spartans. And, and Michigan State played Purdue tough in that game in West Lafayette. You have to look at the, the Ohio State-Illinois game and think, man, so much is on the line for that one. Boy. Wisconsin Northwestern can the Badgers hit shots yeah. like they did today and can Northwestern with a depleted roster get it done where getting it done with the one hand hand the pass though by Xavier Johnson living on that baseline and just shuffling that over to Khalil Ware hey what Xavier Johnson's been good in this first half they needed it here's Lily to the rim for the two hand flush well, the layups are still over but the dunks continue to be a good thing but that's a total breakdown by Indiana with their pick and roll defense Johnson needs some help from Ibako. Shot clock down to 10. The freshman going to work. Finds Ware. And a whistle. And a travel. Ware walks. And a turnover by Ware, but Khalil Ware has had some big plays in this first half. Well, Xavier Johnson getting baseline. That's a sweet little pass. Zach Hicks coming over to stop it. And there is no stopping Khalil Ware when he is at the rim attacking aggressively. Ware has been a force these last four for 12. I would tell you that, man, Penn State could be in some serious trouble. But just 26 points for Indiana with four to play. And... These other guys for Penn State have stepped up to Marco Dunn. Certainly Nick Kern making a three that kind of broke the ice alongside DeMarco Dunn. With Penn State, you have to be a little concerned about the paint points disparity at this point. 18 to 6 inside. There's no doubt that Indiana is not going to stop going there. Well, Boyle trying the three, and Xavier Johnson with the rebound, and he'll push. Johnson's been good in his first half. Two points, four rebounds, three assists. Renew tips it right back out to the X-Man. Xavier on the drive, banging his way inside. Offensive foul on Renew, and that's two on the Indiana big man. Oh, I can't imagine that Leo Boyle feels good after <laughs> taking a shot like that. Oh, my goodness. Man, he just gets blasted into tomorrow here by Malik Renew. Lowers his shoulder and... That's like the old that's like the old Carl Malone where you want to take a charge. I'm gonna make you feel that and yeah, <laughs> I like that from Leo Boyle it's The like, Boyle rules. Let's go. They didn't hit like that when I was a leopard at Lafayette <laughs> Five-point advantage for Indiana There's Baldwin still trying to get on track Cups on his hip. Buff Johnson driving at where? No. Wahab there finishing. No, he can't get it to drop. Shot her go to the line for two. I mean, one of these has got to go in for Penn State eventually, right? Well, coming up, we'll see if it happens by halftime because the State Farm halftime report's coming up. Dave, Rafael, Bruce, and Lafonso will recap all the action from the day, from the day so far, and we'll see if Penn State can get one down at the rim. By halftime, second foul on Ware, sending Wahab to the line. It's been the free throw line that has kept Penn State around. They've outscored Indiana seven nothing at the line. Hoosiers haven't even attempted a foul shot. And how about Kudus Wahab? You talk about improvements in his game. That's one area he's really gotten better. He's improved in, in, a, in such a variety of ways. We talked about this last night. He kind of came into the Big Ten at the wrong time when he was at Maryland. Just the, the plethora of elite bigs between Trace Jackson Davis and Edie and Travion Williams and Kofi, Kofi Coburn. Coburn. And the list just goes on and on. Hunter Dickinson. I mean, they're just all over the place. And then it's like, hi, I'm here too. Yeah. You're well, coming from the Big East where there's not nearly, I think, the size or physicality at that position. Well, he's kind of back now to where he was as a sophomore at Georgetown, where he was 13 points, 8 rebounds yeah. a game. But it took him a while on a circuitous it. path to get there. Where extra pass. pass and Walker with a finish. I think Indiana can take advantage of the way that Penn State is guarding ball screens. That they are so up with these loser guards. That short roll for Khalil Ware is going to allow him to be a playmaker. Baldwin into Wahab. Ware with two fouls, remember. But a foul called on Johnson as he pokes it free from behind. And a one-and-one one coming up. 
Take a look at tonight's assist of the game, fueled by Gatorade. Look at there. There's the two on Xavier Johnson. You've got Khalil Ware short rolling. Puff Johnson helps up Hill a little bit. Anthony Walker, it's good interior passing from big to big. He finishes the play with the two-hand jam. On end of the one and one coming for Kudus Wahab. Wahab pure at the line. 0 for 6 from the floor, 3 for 3 at the line. Yeah, he's missed every point blank shot, but he is untouchable from 15 feet right now. Substitution for DeMarco Dunn into the game now. Puff Johnson will leave. Well, there's why Penn State's still in the game right there. 9 nothing at the line. When you're shooting 20% from the floor, that's one way to stick around. And Wahab didn't touch the rim on either of those two free throws. And a timeout. With Some adversity with Khalil Ware's free throw shooting late. He makes the one that counts. That was a big time win over a desperate Michigan State team. A little pressure applied by Penn State. Xavier Johnson working up against DeMarco Dunn. Johnson just blows by their pressure. Looks fresh. That's, that's, that's a bad shot. Yeah. If you're not going to shoot the first one, you shouldn't take that one. Well, that's a frustrating shot for Mike Woods in the watch. They're not matched up. I mean, you're just giving points away after just a terrible shot. And a one-point game as they got one at the rim. <laughs> wow, the streak is broken. I didn't even register. That's going to change everything coming up on the halftime show. There's a foul on the screen. Get excited, folks. Yes. We've had a layup fall. For Penn State. Nobody guarding Nick Kern, and it's a sweet little. That's probably one of the more difficult layups <laughs> that we've seen. So the reverse, get that English on it, and go glass. One for 14 on layups tonight, and you're down one. Yeah, your, your best player, he's Baldwin, hasn't made a field goal. Baco, eight to shoot against Kern. And a foul is called coming in to close off the double DeMarco Dunn got a little too close and committed the personal they were going down there to, to help Nick Kern out because he's given up size but with seven on the shot clock and you just got to be solid with that trap and trust that your defense will rotate out first free throws of the night for Indiana and it's Abaco who's an 81 percent shooter Peyton Sparks on the floor for the first time tonight. They're going to get Khalil Ware out of there with two fouls to make sure he doesn't pick up his third. One more for Mbako. This is his first free throw he's attempted. Didn't attempt any the last two games. Which in a way is a bit surprising because he has been more aggressive in attacking the rim, close enough. Yeah, he's not afraid to drive the ball. No, he's... Kind of his run to, to be co-freshman of the year was really impressive to see. He, he has improved in such a number of ways. So from mid-January on, it's been a stark improvement. Here's Puff Johnson. Quick three in the corner. Good run out by a lot of contest. That forced that quick shot. Now on the other end, waiting, towing the line. The three grazes the rim. He waited again. But I thought he shot fake to let that defender fly by. That's a different type of look than the last one. Here's Kern. Cross it over to Baco, running into Sparks inside. Offensive foul. And Peyton Sparks contributing. Yeah. You want to make an impact and tell your coach that you're ready to get more minutes? A little bit close. Looks like his heels are up. Kind of close to that charge arc, but getting in position. This will show a better story. He's outside. Well done by Peyton Sparks. Kind of hopscotched out of yeah. there right before the contest. Had the, had the feel. Well, there's no doubt Peyton Sparks is strong. He did 27 <laughs> reps on 185 pounds. I don't, I don't pounds. think anyone has ever doubted that. No. Well, to get a collision with him is not going to feel good. Johnson trying to split that defense of that ball. Baldwin just looking up the floor and forgot to control the basketball. 
for the most part, in Indiana has done a pretty good job of taking care of the ball. Just five first half turnovers. That, that's a break right there. Rondis Mitchell out there defending that inbound for Penn State. Xavier Johnson picked up by Puff Johnson on the switch. Here's Mbako from the elbow. Contested Man. jumper and he hit it. That's a tough shot there. Kenzie Mbako, pretty good defense, gets to his spot and raises up and drills it. Ten points for Mbako. Penn State can hold for the final shot. Keeping ball into that right hand. Here's Puff with five left in the half. Baldwin, that three won't go. Long rebound picked up by DeMarco Dunn. That shot would not have counted had it gone in, and halftime arrives. 32 27, Indiana. Take catches here in the second half. Well, certainly something you want to do is keep an eye on. On Mbako, you see the numbers and the disparity from a field goal standpoint and paint point standpoint. But the layups at the rim have just been plaguing Penn State through one half of basketball. Here's Baldwin. Can he get it going right to the rim for two? Dave Cups just getting blown by there by Ace Baldwin. And then Kudis Wahab had one thought on his mind. Take Khalil Ware out of the play. Nice play drawn up coming out of the locker room for Penn State. No confidence for Ace Baldwin, too. His first field goal. Now Xavier Johnson. The entry to renew. Double comes. Johnson. Mbako left alone for three. Offensive rebound where? I would not rotate from McKenzie Mbako to Xavier Johnson. And oh, that was Bob with the foul. Wall. Not a great decision there. Certainly Penn State lucky that Mbako didn't knock it down, but Khalil Ware on the offensive glass, keeping that play alive. One more for Ware. He has seven. To go with his eight rebounds. Second team all Big Ten pick by the media. Leads Indiana in points, rebounds, and blocks, and he's doing it again tonight. He's had a great year. He has. The expectations were high coming in. Transferring over from Oregon. He has totally lived up to that high. 14 double doubles this year. We'll be surprised to see a 15th tonight. Now Kern with 10 to shoot. Found a crease to the rim. Misses from point blank range through contact and renew the rebound. And Baco in transition. The hesitation and then caught the bottom of the rim. Hicks off the shot pick. The three falls. We've seen both teams early in this second half have a hard time matching up with their man. And early in the game, we talked about the difficulty for a new matching up with a guy like Zach Hicks. You're late to the party. He's making you pay for it. And they really haven't been able to take much advantage of that. And Baco inside, no. Pretty good look at the rim. Maybe it's that rim. <laughs> like that's sort of impossible. You got the carnival rims. I don't remember it being a problem in the Iowa-Ohio State game as Puff Johnson throws that one at the rim and it won't go. And Ibaka the rebound. That's not a great shot by Puff Johnson. Right. Rushed a shot put on the baseline. Xavier Johnson hesitates, tried to drop it off, and where one looking? Here comes Puff Johnson to the other end. Count it! And the foul! Penn State with a chance to grab their first lead. Well, in the first half, Indiana did a pretty good job of taking care of the ball, and there weren't many opportunities for runouts for Penn State. It's a different story on this play. Puff Johnson off to the races, gets some contact from Mbako, and that's just not a great turnover there by Xavier Johnson starting the break for the Nittany Lions. And Puff Johnson getting ready to go to the line. He's got six tonight. 
His last time in Minnesota, he had his best game, 19 points here a couple of weeks ago. Not in this building, but in this state. He's really come on here late. Kind of find, found his, his niche and found his role. And he gives Penn State their first lead of the night. 35-34, Nittany Lions. Renu with the hook gets it right back for Indiana. Oh, Indiana was just breaking that pressure to break it. They were breaking it to score. So cut by Renu and good fight from Cuts. Baldwin in the corner. Wide open is Kern. There's a three. Kern, a guy that just had not shot it well the last six games. Hadn't made a three in that time period. He's knocked down two here tonight. He's been so solid for the most part, especially in conference play over 10 points per game. Wahab holds his ground and a tie up. Possession arrow keeps it with Indiana. Check out this ultra replay shot with Samsung Galaxy S24. This is the run out here for Puff Johnson and a little floor view coming right into your living room. Again, this is shot by a phone. This looks that good with that phone. Johnson pumps in the corner. The freshman wanted the three. Instead, Pump Johnson wrestles it away. Took it right away from Mbako. Baldwin almost lost that one. Penn State's got two players in the corner. Now they set, situate that. Hicks was one of those two. He comes up top for the wow. three. Banks it home! And a chance for one more. It, it's a miscommunication between Malik Renu and Gabe Cubs. And this was a problem in the game in Bloomington. It was certainly a, a problem in the game in State College. Zach Hicks loves to slip out of these pick and rolls. Pops right back. Cubs is late. And then you compound your mistake by fouling a jump shooter. Zach Hicks had the range last night, and he's found it here in the second half as well. Rob, this Penn State team made seven field goals in the first half. We played three and a half minutes in the second half. They've hit five already. It's been a different team here. A 13-2 run. Indiana needs an answer. Can Mbako provide it? Got a great look. A way of a shot. Now Baldwin looking. Lob ahead to Hicks. Back to Kern. He'll attack. Puff Johnson, corner three. Rebound scooped up by Renew. And Xavier Johnson, you see the hand out, calm down. Johnson, foul. Timeout. On the floor after the foul on Nick Kern. Tina game, 8 of 16 from 3 against the Hoosiers. Let's check in with Andy. I was just listening to the Indiana huddle. There was no panic. Mike Woodson just stressing, let's get a bucket and then go from there. Slow it down. The other assistants kept saying, it's our turn now to make a run. Our turn. So no panic at this point, guys. Well, maybe now after that foul, there's not panic but anger. Xavier Johnson called for the offensive foul. That's a tough call to go against Xavier Johnson because both those guys are wrapping each other up. His second. Here's Baldwin. Three assists in the second half for Ace Baldwin. Done. Probing. Five to shoot for Dunn. And a travel. Turn it right back over to Indiana. Good job by Indiana. They're handling multiple dribble drives, closing out, taking the three away, and forcing a turnover. There's Johnson. Leo curling. And Baco from the foul line. That won't go. Rebound loose. Johnson comes up with it, finding where for the hammer. Xavier Johnson has played with burst tonight. And at times this season, he's been so injured with the foot, the elbow, has been on a rhythm. 
He's been quick to the basketball. Good hustle play right there to save that one and set up Khalil Ware. Ware's so under control. And it helps when your wingspan is like 7'6". That does help. I would <laughs> you assume. Probably, you could probably dunk from your tippy toes. Four point game in Baco with his third foul a moment ago. Here's Baldwin working against Leal. In the corner, the three. Pinball's out for Hicks. It's got a good look off the drive. Renew against O'Boyle. Wants to take him off the dribble. Fades away though. And Wahab oh, had to help by Wahab coming yeah. over and contesting that shot. Helping out O'Boyle on the defense. Done. Renew tying him off in the possession arrow. We'll keep it on this end of the floor with Penn State. Demetrius Lilly, who's been banged up, battling a back injury over the last few weeks. He's back on the floor. Kudus Wahab will get a breather. Here's Hicks. Hicks is pretty aggressive with that one it two. It's borderline travel. Ball loose on the floor. Hicks diving for it. If it's a tie up again, it'll be Indiana ball, and it is. Back to back tie ups, and the Hoosiers get it back. The winner of this game gets Nebraska in the nightcap tomorrow night. The Huskers, the three seed, and Penn State trying to make it to that matchup up by four. Indiana would love to go on a run here in this tournament, but no Trey Galloway, at least for tonight. Think about for Penn State, if you win tonight, you guarantee yourself a, a 500 season, which in year one, with, with the lack of retention of players, only Kanye Clare, and he's not even here anymore from last year's team, then that would be an incredible achievement. Trying to hit Leo, and it's out of bounds, a turnover. Well, you're right, though, Rob. I mean, you look at what Mike Rhodes has done in this first year. They've used that pressure to get the turnovers up. They ended up with nine conference wins for just the eighth time in a 32-year Big Ten era at Penn State. And you see, to start 2-0 in a Big Ten tournament career, Mike Rhodes with a win joins our own Bruce Weber, among others, who started 2-0 in their Big Ten tournament careers. Long way to go in this one, though. Baldwin against Cubs, crossing him over, leaning in on the freshman, left it short, got his own back. Here's O'Boyle, sets up for three. That Way pass short. was low, and the shot thrown off. But when he went down to get it, you could yeah. just see the rhythm was totally Takes you out of it. Xavier Johnson with the open two. He's given them, even though he's only got four points. Five rebounds, four assists. For the most part, he's taking care of the ball. Yeah, steady hand. He has, yeah. Baldwin to a cutting DeMarco Dunn. Here's O'Boyle. Recovery from Indiana. Little drive and then the rotation on point. Impressive. Scramble now with six to shoot for Penn State. And a turtle. Defensive possession for the Hoosiers. And now can they cash in? Cups for the lead. There it is. And a timeout. Penn State. Baldwin to walk it up. Both for their last four, three turnovers in the last four minutes. They have not scored in that span. Indiana yeah, going to a little zone action here. Seems sparingly this season from the Hoosiers. See if it throws off Penn State. Trying to flash Puff Johnson into the middle of that zone. Seven to shoot. Five on the shot clock. Going to have to go. Kern on the drive into the paint. It's fouled with two on the shot clock. The bail out there. Good decision there by Mike Woodson to just throw a little wrinkle out there. For the most part, worked, but Nick Kern forcing the issue and drawing up. Penn State, only team to win the reach the quarterfinals in two straight seasons as a double-digit seed. They were able to do it last year, but they do it again as the 11 seed. Mike Rhodes. Who had such great success in his six years at VCU, went to three NCAA tournaments in six years. 
long time Division three coach at Randolph Macon. Joe Crispin on his staff, also a Division three head coach in his background and helping coordinate that offense for Penn State. And a foul is going to be called on Renew. His third. Renew has committed some silly fouls here tonight. You think about the player control foul on Leo O'Boyle and then just not come and set there. Such an important player for this Indiana team. And a little bit of this is, is also on Xavier Johnson for not waiting on that screen. But if he's going, when he's got to understand, I'm, I'm just backing off and letting him go. Baldwin. Hesitation and then a whistle and an offensive foul on Kern. Cups taking the charge. Well, Cups matched the physicality of Ace Baldwin. And then he's to the basketball here. Kern trying to drive right back to where Baldwin was. And it's a great play by Gabe Cups. And that's four on Kern. That's a huge foul. And so Kern will leave. In comes DeMarco Dunn. And you're talking about a guy in. Nick Kern, who's averaged over 10 points per game in Big Ten play. Honorable mention all Big Ten selection this year, and now on the bench for the foreseeable future. Johnson will reset. Off Johnson with a show and the takeaway. Johnson to the other end for the two-hand flush and the lead for Penn State. In hands there by Puck Johnson. I don't think Xavier Johnson thought he'd ever reach in like that. He gets the ball and he's going the other way. Now he gets another tap on that new catch. Well, Puck Johnson the last couple of weeks has been tremendous. Yeah. Here's Renew working against Puck inside. Ball pops free and it ends up with Waha. This has been a tough sequence here for the lead for me. Here's Puck Johnson. Kicks back out to Baldwin. Here's Wahab one on one against Ware. This has been a tough matchup for him tonight. Left that one short. Got his own back. Wahab rejected by Ware. Still a tough matchup. Boy, that was a slap back. Leo fouled. It'll hang up. And Plinko its way down into the arms of Zach Hicks. You can see the, the fingertips of what Khalil Ware does and brings in protecting that pain. They are everywhere. State looking to attack it. I mean, you just you have to think twice when Khalil Ware is in the game. Kudus Wahab is 0 for 8 from the floor, yeah. and none and of those shots have been from outside of 10 feet. And he's played really well the last six games. 14 and 8, 58% from the field. It's been a different story tonight. He's a career-high 62% shooter this year, going 0 for 8 tonight. Real wear making that all-defensive team on full display in this game. Yeah, that looks like a very good decision. <laughs> Ten minutes to go, one point game. Exactly what you want at the Big Ten tournament. Indiana going back to that zone. And stepped on the sideline. Did DeMarco Dunn. That's a turnover by Penn State. Minnesota native Race Thompson in the building. Hello, Race. He was in school from 2017 to 2023. <laughs> Oh, the, uh, the COVID special that we're going to see here, right? Did we drop off the doctor from the front of his name? <laughs> I wish I could talk, but sadly I can't. No, I... <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Hummel. Yes. Where? Against Wahab. <laughs> and that'll fall. His turnaround jumper is, is major league. There's not anybody on the floor that's blocking him. Double double number 15 for Ware. Puck Johnson again. Puck is magic tonight in Minnesota. Yeah, going to that, that zone again, and that's just too easy. It's a pass to the wing and a pass to the corner and nothing else. 12 for Johnson. He had 19 his last trip to the state of Minnesota a couple of weeks ago. Leo stripped out of his hands and a foul called.
Grace Thompson doing some officiating from the stands or some analysis work. I think he sees himself on the monitor right now. It's like they're they're showing me. He's a good player, man. He was. Yeah, I would guess Mike Woodson would be happy to put a uniform on him tonight. Get him back out there. There he is. You can see he's doesn't want it. He's like, I, I don't want anybody to know I'm here. <laughs> oh. The cover has been blown. Yep. They're short. There's Johnson with the rebound. His sixth board to go with his 12 points. Very similar to the line he had in the national title game against Kansas a couple of years ago for North Carolina. 11 points, six rebounds on the biggest stage in college basketball. See if Penn State can maybe find the middle of the zone. Now using the ball screen. Ball Baldwin just nothing doing. One for ten and 0 for five from three tonight. Wahab and Baldwin are combined the one of 18 to Baldwin there with the pick man. That's a layup it's Baldwin just the active hands and always gives max effort There's Puff again Johnson looking Coming up on eight to play in this one Seven to shoot Johnson against Renew Banging his way inside, and that's a charge. Third on Puff Johnson. Timeout on the floor. Indiana by one. Who will advance in Minneapolis? Player in steals since at least 1993, helping Penn State second in the Big Ten, forcing nearly 15 turnovers per game. Indiana with 11 tonight. Feed it to Renew. Good screen there by Cubs. Where? Working against Wahab. Pretty good defense. I thought it should have been a foul. I thought he got him going up. Done on the drive. And a foul on the floor. It'll go on Cups as we check in with Andy Katz. I was just listening to the Penn State huddle. Mike Rhodes stressed to his team, let's get a bunch of offensive possessions. Let's get some more flow offensively. And he specifically looked at Puff Johnson and says, you can take your men off the dribble. If you have that opportunity, go for it. Well, that's kind of the mantra of this Penn State offense. They're not afraid to flow a little bit, get things moving, and let guys play freely. So Indiana's just kept him from doing that tonight and taking your man off the dribble is a, a good plan until you meet Khalil Ware <laughs> Who has really <laughs> defended that rim tonight At the line is DeMarco Dunn First free throw attempt of the night And the front end is good Big Ten Plus, you'll get thousands of non-televised live events, access to next day on-demand replays, multi-view so you can watch up to four games at once and a 24-7 channel for your favorite school. There's no plus like home. Subscribe and stream for as low as $9.95 a month at Big10Plus.com. Seventh lead change of the night, Penn State on top by one. For, for Penn State, driving the ball will be a good thing, but you've got to have the mindset that it's probably not going to be for you. You're trying to draw secondary defenders and look for your shooters. Where? Working against Wahab. Wahab player, just soft touch. Wahab's not going to defend that any better. Where's the special talent? No, he is. He's a big time player. 14 points, 11 rebounds. Done. Against Mbako, and Mbako's throwing that one out of bounds with 14 on the shot clock. The shots that if you're defending Khalil Ware, you're trying to make him take these types of looks. That's good defense. And it's better offense by Ware. Baldwin. Four to shoot. Contested jumper. That's, that's, yeah, they're going to get where. Grab that arm. That's number three on Khalil Ware. One and one coming up. 
And you can see as Wahab is trying to make a play on that ball, Leo Ware clearly grabbing him. A hold of that right arm. And Wahab, four for four tonight at the line. This is the front end. Leo secures the rebound. This has been a battle tonight. One point, Indiana lead. And Baco, the open three. Little bit strong. And a foul is going to go on Malik Renu. No, I think no, they're going to get it. here. It's going to stay here. You're right. It'll be on Puff Johnson. And that's his fourth. Nick Kern checking back in. He's got four fouls. He's coming in from the left side of the screen. Oh, that's, oh, that's tough. It's every time for a rebound in the Big Ten. No way, says Mike Rhodes. That takes a big weapon off the floor for Penn State. And the new with one more. He's averaged almost 17 points per game away from Bloomington this year, has Renu, and he's into double figures tonight with 10. Three-point advantage for Indiana. Johnson denying Baldwin the ball. Six. Not a lot of movement and an offensive foul against Penn State. And the charge is called. And that's the fifth on Nick Kern. So Nick Kern with his fifth personal foul. And he'll foul out with eight points, two rebounds, and still 6-0-1 to play. This foul trouble for Penn State is really snuck up on him. Yeah, it's, that's an obvious call there as Kern just sticks that hip out and takes out Xavier Johnson. Some fans courtside with Indiana hats on were discussing the foul with Xavier Johnson enough to get him to smile after that one. The veteran bringing the ball up for IU. Entry renew. Pull free, but a foul is called. That's on Baldwin. That'll be his first 19 foul on the one and one. And this is not a strength of Indiana shooting free throws. Dead last in the league. They have been better though in this four-game win streak. Yeah, that's, I love that Baldwin's reaction is like, what do you mean? <laughs> it's just straight arm. Players do not have a good feel <laughs> for when they've committed fouls or not. They may have a good feel, they just may not be completely no, honest that's, that's, about that feel. Fair. I'm sure there were times where you may have committed a foul and no, you tried to sell it. You did. I'm not saying that I'm above that. I, no, no, I was, no. I'm in the same boat as everybody I. else that's played. Except for you. you no, I, said, I said, I'm not saying you're above that either. <laughs> I would initiate reviews. You, you were that guy in that NCAA commercial. It's like, it's on me. <laughs> exactly. Baldwin to the rim. And a layup falls. That's been a challenge all night for Penn State. They needed that one. New looking back to Johnson. Mbako has Nix. Wahab with the challenge, and he'll send Mbako to the line. Penn State fans thought he was straight up and yeah, down. I don't know. That's exactly what they would teach Kudus Wahab to do. <laughs> Dribble drive baseline. Wahab, I mean, he can't even be more vertical than that. That is not a good call. 
And he's as good as anybody in this conference and has that type of reputation that when he's going up to contest, he he does a great job. His arms don't come down. He, he's straight up and down. He was straight as a board yeah. on that shot. No, I know. Another look at him. He's going up vertically. He's coming down in the same spot. That, that's a good contest by Kudus Wahab. Tough foul to pick up. That's his fourth. Penn State is in a world of hurt with their foul trouble. They've already lost Kern, Puff Johnson, and Kudus Wahab, each with four. And a time on games decided by six points or they, fewer this they did, season. They had a lot of close games in the non-conference early on. You think back to that Army True. game. Yep. You think back to Florida Gulf Coast. You think back to, I believe it was Moorhead State that, that took them to the wire. Yep. The yeah, game you saw right here on the Big Ten Network. Yeah. Harvard, there's a lot of close games early that Indiana found ways to win. There's Baldwin to Hicks for three. Had to drop it off. That that was really good look. Yeah. East Baldwin just dropped that back. And I'm sure Hicks is thinking, man, I, I should have made that one. That was a great look. Oh, Baldwin probably should have about 15 assists tonight, too. He's got six. Mako off the skip. He'll drive inside. He just lost that ball. But that's ace ball win again. And he's just waiting on this, and yep, Boy. <laughs> he is so good at that. Showed it in the open of the broadcast. Uh, he was on just, a spin, it's, but it's the same unbelievable concept. how he is always getting a hand on the basketball. Four and a half to go with this one. Penn State down by four. Marco Dunn lost the dribble turnover. I think they call it oh, foul. did they get the foul? Well, looks like they're marching the other way. It's going to be an offensive foul, I believe. Nope, it will not be. It's on Indiana and it's on Malik Renu. Did he point the other way? He did point the other way, absolutely. That's definitely. Renu reaching in. Oh, I thought he got ball. Front and good for Dunn. That, that's a that's... really tough call to go against Malik Renu. That looks like all ball. He lives in foul trouble. And that's does. something that he, he has got to somehow find a way to stay on the floor next year. I mean, down the stretch especially, over the last month of this season, it seemed like every Indiana game, Malik Renu had four fouls at some point. Six disqualifications this year. Two-point ball game in the Twin Cities. Penn State showing a little bit of a zone here. Very struggling with it a little bit. Leo gets inside with the left hand and Puff Johnson the rebound. That's a foul on Mbako. That's a terrible foul. That's his fourth and a timeout on the floor. 55-53 Indiana by a pair. Sorry for this Penn State team. Now he walked on senior night last weekend, but he could return for one more year, as could Puff Johnson, who's at the line right now for Penn State. Hey, you got to think that Mike Rhodes would love to have those two players back for one more season at Penn State. Absolutely. Foul by Mackenzie Mbako going to the break. I mean, they're 94 feet away, and, and Penn State has not been able to score, so... Just giving away three points at the line. And you pick up your fourth foul in the process, too. Xavier Johnson and Indiana tied at 55. Is that Nittany Lion 2 3 zone again? We'll see if Khalil Ware can kind of make his way into the middle and find that turnaround. Renu wanted to go big to big to get it to Ware. Here's Ware. Wahab playing with four fouls, loping to the rim. And Ware picks up the personal on Wahab. That'll foul out the Penn State big man and Ware to the line. That reach in there. Nice job by Khalil Ware of putting the onus on the officials facing up and making an aggressive drive right at Kudus Wahab. So Wahab, a 
really rough night shooting the basketball. 0 for 8 from the floor. Four points, nine rebounds, and five fouls. Penn State's just going to go really small with Raquandis Mitchell. I guess Puff Johnson's the five. <laughs> and he's got four fouls, too. Yeah. Well, Hobbs out. Lilly has not. I'm, I'm a little surprised to not see Demetrius Lilly out here. He has no fouls. And you wonder if his back is not yeah, causing maybe. some issues again. There's Lilly on the bench. Well, the Indiana situation is starting to worsen as well with Mbako and Renew each with four. Where one for two. Who can find enough offense to win this one late? The winner gets Nebraska tomorrow night in the nightcap of the Big Ten Network. Baldwin. Baldwin into the paint. Turns it over. There's nowhere to go there. Indiana's defense swarming in that painted area. It's a big stop for the Hoosiers. Now, if you're Indiana, you're looking right at the oh, big. Absolutely. I mean, you are looking to throw this thing inside and punish Penn State. There's Renew. Floater short. Rebound out of bounds to Penn State. Yeah, that, that is fortunate for the Nittany Lions. Renew gets a great look. Indiana almost gets a second chance opportunity. Rebounding is, is going to be really difficult for Penn State here. And again, Puff Johnson's got to be careful with his challenges. He's playing with four. There's Johnson trying to turn the corner, gets to the rim, and a foul's called. Wait, you've got to feel that Khalil Ware, if this thing gets put on the glass, is probably going to get pancaked. That's a wild drive from Puff Johnson. And Xavier Johnson, that's just not a smart play. Look at where Puff ends up. Ooh. <laughs> it's right around the area where I believe Dennis Rodman found his cameraman friend. Here at the Target Center back in the 90s. I know the name is Puff, but I'm going to guess it's not soft as the name might denote. When he lands on top of you. Seems to be no worse for the wear. Checking the glasses, though. How do they fit? They're a little, they're a little Oh, wow. Yeah, they were crooked. <laughs> a little crooked. Maybe they were crooked before. I don't want to, I don't want to judge. But they do look a little worse for wear. <laughs> Indiana has just given points away at the foul line here. Penn State without a field goal in over three minutes. But they've somehow found a way to take the lead. Right back to the post and wear. Feeds Renew on the spin. Wild shot. Wear there to finish and it's lodged, but a foul. The foul goes underneath on Ace Baldwin. That was not a strong take from Malik Renew, but th there's the benefits of having this big lineup with, with the small guards of Penn State. Great rebound by Khalil Ware. Raquandis Mitchell probably fortunate here that this was not an and one. Easily could have been. Yeah, Raquandis Mitchell with his first. And Ware at the line. Four for five tonight for Khalil Ware. 16 points, 13 rebounds. How about Indiana? 14 to 17 from the line. The worst free throw shooting team in the Big Ten Conference this year. And Ware misses the second. We're tied at 57. First two games were 85 71 and 83 74. We'd have to have about nine overtimes to get to that number. Tonight. Johnson's three pinballs out. Good yeah, look. Good look. Yes. Line that one up. Just in and out. Under two to play in a tie game. Here's Ware. Entry to renew against Johnson. Right to Ware, who throws it home. Penn State is just so small. Great awareness there by Renew to just throw it to the front of the rim and let Khalil Ware go make a play. Baldwin, a timeout for Penn State. They have one remaining. Anna, their bigs are going to have to be really disciplined here because the small lineup, while it's certainly an advantage for the Hoosiers on their end, the guard is a tough one, especially for Renew.
because he is not used to guarding a perimeter player. Leo Ware gonna have to be locked into Puff Johnson. He's had himself a night. 16. A handoff to Baldwin. 13 to shoot. Ace will turn the corner. The runner drops, and we're tied at 59. But he gets that type of look because they bring Ware out to have to guard on the perimeter. Now, if you're Ace Baldwin, you're not concerned about the shot blocking. This little set there by Mike Rhodes. Right back to where he finds Johnson. Big three is short, and the rebound hits. I have to think Penn State's thinking, we are shrinking this floor. And we're going to make Indiana, who is 3 of 12 from 3, prove it from deep. Here's Baldwin. Got a screen. Got a look. The three strong. Johnson tried to bat it out, and it ends up with Johnson. Xavier Johnson on the run against Ace Baldwin and a tie-up. Oh, what a play by the defensive player of the year in the Big Ten Conference. And two Nittany Lions collide here. Let's see how much ball he gets. Boy, that could have been, that, that should have been a foul. Got him on the rim. Yeah, that, that's a foul. Well, that's, that's definitely a foul. Yeah, got him on the arm and the wrist. A break for Penn State. In a tie game, they get it back. All going around the Puff Johnson screen. A runner again. This one too strong. And Ware with a rebound. About a two and a half second difference between game and shot clock. Indiana with two timeouts. Does Mike Woodson want one? I think he does. One timeout of his Instagram where Fred Hoiberg was asked his favorite T-Wolf. Thought maybe we'd hear himself, and then I thought we'd Bobby hear Kevin Humble. Garnett. No, 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 no. You can't average three points a game and be anyone's favorite player. <laughs> You're my but favorite. But then he, he went Sam Cassell. I, I was a little surprised to hear that. All right, and Baco to inbound. Back into the back corner goes to Xavier Johnson. Fifteen on the shot clock. Tie ball game. Big Ten tournament. Seven to shoot. It's renewed at the top, driving on Mitchell. Dies back up. There's Leo, the Bloomington kid, delivers for Indiana. Here's Dunn. Puff Johnson for the win. Short. And Anthony Leal's game winner sends his school off.